Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject fundamentals of the manufacturing processes and uh, today uh, we will be talking about the another metal working process which is called extrusion. Extrusion is also used for making the, uh, this is also one of the metal working process means the plastic deformation is the main mechanism which is used for achieving the desired size and shape. So, basically simple shape products uh, like rolling uh, are made using this process, but it can also be used for making the hollow products and those which are a little bit more complex more complex than those which can be produced by rolling. So, in that way the extrusion is uh, somewhat uh, better and as far as the comparison is concerned much higher reduction ratios can be achieved, higher uh, change in cross section can be achieved. So, uh, now we will see the kind of uh, uh, approach which is used in the extrusion process. The most uh, common uh, approach in the extrusion process is that, uh, that it uses one die here and this opening can be of the any shape which is desired in the product. So, it can be circular it can be square, it can be uh, hexagonal or anything whatever we want. So, this opening decides the shape of the product which uh, will be made. So, here little bit uh, like you can say rounding off can be done in the opening. So, uh, this is basically die having the opening as per the shape desired and this is you can say cylindrical container or you can say cavity. Uh, in this cavity uh, we put the hot metal or the stock or the billet which is to be processed. So, this is the billet and uh, uh, against this billet one dummy block is placed uh, which is normally of the steel 3 to uh, uh, 20 to th uh, 30 to 40 mm thickness and then against this dummy block force is applied with the help of ram. So, this is ram force is applied onto the dummy block uh, onto the billet through the dummy block. So, application of the force results in the movement of the metal and it starts coming out of the die or the opening and then it takes the shape of the uh, cross section of the die. So, this is how we will keep on getting the cross section of the same, uh, same cross section along the length. So, uh, the uniform cross section is achieved throughout the length. So, uh, as the mat billet is pushed with the help of the ram, so it is pressurized and under the pressure metal starts flowing out of the die and takes the shape of the opening in the die in order to produce the different shape cross sections. So, this is the basic uh, approach which is used, uh, this is the simplest approach which is used in the extrusion process. So, here if we see this is the cross section of the billet, this cross section or so like say this if it is the cylindrical the diameter d naught and the diameter after the extrusion is d f. 
So, we can determine the area, area before extrusion divided by area after the extrusion and the ratio of these two which of course can be determined by from the pi by 4 d naught square divided by pi by 4 d f square like this. So, uh, this ratio is called extrusion ratio indicates the extent of the change in cross section of the billet has been brought to the extruded product. So, this extrusion ratio um, in case of the um, extrusion, uh, extrusion process this is very high it is 20 to 50. Uh, of the 20 to 50 value while in case of the rolling the reduction in thickness is very gradual maybe 20 percent 30 percent like that uh, of the thickness. But here the reduction in cross sectional area is very significant. So, although process can be the hot or the cold working type, but the normally the temperatures depending upon the metal. Uh, the extrusion is carried out like say 500 to the 1200 degree centigrade and using the pressure very high ranging from say 70 MPa to the 3500 MPa. So, very high pressures can also be used because here when the pressure is built up with the help of ram onto the billet then it starts flowing out and uh, takes the shape of the die opening. So, speed of the extrusion, uh, speed of the extrusion, speed at which metal comes out may vary significantly like for the uh, non-ferrous metals like aluminum and magnesium it is very low 0 0.04 meter per second and for the heavy metals like copper system uh, like 4.5 meter per second. So, this stress uh, extrusion speed is one factor the temperature at which extrusion is carried out is the another factor and the metal which is being worked out is the another factor. These are the three factors that will be affecting the pressure to be used for the extrusion. So, extrusion pressure is governed by the extrusion speed, the temperature of the billet and the metal which is uh, uh, being worked out. So, uh, as per the kind of the process whether it is hot and cold uh, the different pressures and the different uh, temperatures are used. So, broadly now I will try to um, uh, classify the extrusion process. Uh, based on the way by which extrusion is carried out or the temperature conditions. So, uh, if you have to plot the tree for the extrusion process, there are two broad categories. One is the hot extrusion or hot working and another is cold extrusion. In hot extrusion variants, again we have one is the forward extrusion and another is backward extrusion. And uh, in case of the cold extrusion again we have a forward extrusion and the uh, backward extrusion. Uh, in, get in the cold extrusion category where the uh, where the temperature of the billet is the is below the um, uh, recrystallization temperature uh, one more one category of the forward extrusion is the hydro static extrusion where the fluid uh, pressure is applied through the fluid and in backward extrusion Further, there are two processes. One is called a, um, a extrusion, cold extrusion forging, and impact 
extrusion. Both are the backward extrusion category carried out at the uh, uh, below the recrystallization temperature and the forward extrusion. For, uh, hydrostatic extrusion is mainly used for the brittle materials like cast iron which helps to apply the uniform pressure. Impact extrusion is used for making the thin walled collapsible tubes, collapsible tubes while uh, thick section thick section and small components are uh, made with the help of the uh, extrusion forging. Uh, forward extrusion is very extensively used and similarly hot backward extrusion for making the number of products. Now one by one I will be taking uh, these uh, different extrusion processes. So uh, like forward hot extrusion. So uh, you know that in case of the uh, cylindrical uh, cavity where the hot billet is placed and with the application of the this is the dummy block and the ram applies the force onto the dummy block. Uh, then uh, metal starts flowing out of the die like this and takes the shape of the opening of the die like this when it flows. So the metal uh, as the metal flows out of the die gradually the metal of the billet will be consumed and uh, in this process there is always a relative movement relative motion between the cylindrical wall and the billet surface, billet surface. So this causes lot of friction. So the wall of the cylinder and the billet both have the relative movement with each other. So there is a relative movement between the two and at high temperature a lot of frictional uh, forces are present. So which makes the, um, the movement of the billet material difficult or it needs more uh, uh, force from the ram. So this friction is one of the negative aspect related with this process and it increases the energy required or the force required to facilitate the extrusion in this case. So in order to reduce this frictional effect normally the lubricants are used. Two types of the lubricants are used one for the high temperature and another for low temperature conditions. For the low temperature conditions normally the fatty oils and the graphites are used while the glass is used as a uh, the lubricant for the high temperatures like uh, 1200 degree centigrade for the steel. Uh, so this uh, uh, steel since the melts under the high temperature conditions not only it provides the friction but also acts as a insulator. So the losses of the heat from the hot billet uh, to the cylindrical wall and others uh, gets reduced while facilitating the movement of the billet within the cylindrical container. Uh, this uh, so the friction between the uh, billet surface and the metallic cylindrical surface is one of the negative aspect related with the forward extrusion and therefore to counter this the backward extrusion has been developed. In backward extrusion the configuration is slightly different. Here we have closed and die cavity and the billet is placed like this in the, in the cylindrical container and then, uh, then here we use one uh, die like this having the opening. Sir, uh, okay, okay. Having the opening of the 
the desired shape and then pressure is applied and then pressure is applied on the die itself uh, through the ram. Ram is hollow, this is the ram and this is a, uh, uh, this ram is hollow. So, the pressure is applied uh, through the ram onto the um, billet uh, which acts through the die. So, this is die. So, the pressure is applied through the ram onto the die and then force acts into the billet and in this process the metal starts flowing out of the die and it follows uh, the reverse uh, direction movement means the, the flow of the metal through the die is in the direction opposite to the direction of the ram movement and that is why it is called backward extrusion. In earlier case what we have seen the flow of the movement of the material uh, from the die opening was in the same direction of the ram that is why it was called the, the forward extrusion. In this case there is no relative movement between the billet and the cylindrical container this is this. So, billet is fixed uh, in the cylindrical container and the flow of the metal from the billet takes place directly into the die. So, there is no relative movement. So, this uh, the frictional effect between the billet and um, the cylindrical container wall is taken care of effectively using the backward extrusion process. However, in this case since the, the extruded metal comes out through the ram itself. So, the handling uh, handling of the of the extruded extruded products extruded products becomes difficult uh, because the, the, there is a ram which is moving forward and through the ram the job is extruded part is coming out which is hot so this makes the handling of the the extruded products difficult in case of the backward extrusion so uh, these are uh, the two uh, hot uh, backward and the forward extrusion processes. Now, uh, we will talk about the cold extrusion processes also there is a forward extrusion and the backward extrusion. In the forward extrusion category uh, the, there are two types one is the conventional forward extrusion and the hydrostatic extrusion in the cold category and uh, here one is like uh, impact extrusion and another is the cold extrusion forging. So, these are the four processes. So, the conventional forward extrusion is the same as what I have already talked. This is the die with the opening and this is the billet and here we have dummy block and this is the ram the pressure is applied. Since this is carried out on under the low temperature conditions, low temperature conditions. So, the reductions which are achieved reduction is achieved in the cold forward extrusion conditions the reduction is less it is not like 20 to 50 units, but very low reductions which can be achieved and uh, which means the difference in the cross section of the billet and the cross section of the extruded product is not as high as uh, what it was in case of the hot uh, uh, extrusion processes. So, so, the reduction is somewhat less means the initial area divided by final area ratio this area is less. Another thing the forces are too high because at high temperature material loses its seal strength it becomes ductile. So, the force is required reduced uh, significantly, but uh, in case of the cold extrusion the force and the pressure requirements are too high and like say for the uh, steels it is as high as 331 MPA 
while in case of the aluminium it may be as high as 600 to 700 MPa. This is for carbon steel and this is for aluminium alloys. So, cold steel extrusion makes it difficult uh, because of uh, uh, the low temperature conditions. Another thing uh, the work hardening of the material at room temperature conditions increases the strength. So, the mechanical properties are good of the cold extruded product as compared to that of the hot extruded products. So, uh, the forward cold extrusion is similar to that of the hot extrusion except that properties are better, force requirement is high and the reduction ratios are less. Now, coming to the, um, the hydrostatic extrusion, this is mainly used for the brittle materials. In case of the conventional extrusion, we know that the force is applied from the one side and then uh, under the pressure conditions, it is starts flowing out, out of the, the die. But in case of the hydro uh, static extrusion here, uh, like this is the one end which is movable and this is the full of the the fluid and here we place the billet and this is the here one side we may have the die opening like this. So, this is the billet and here it is surrounded by the, the fluid. This fluid can be uh, like glycerin plus alcohol, uh, it can be uh, mineral oil or uh, so uh, and the pressure is built up uh, with the application of the ram. So, ram applies the, uh, the pressure onto the fluid. So, so, the advantage of applying the uh, pressure uh, through the fluid is that pressure acts uniformly onto the material from all the sides and it is not acting from one side. So, uh, this facilitates the flow of the metal uh, through the die without getting crushed. So, even the uh, low ductility metals can be effectively extruded with the help of the uh, with the help of the hydrostatic extrusion. So, uh, so I'll be uh, I'll be now mentioning the kind of the difference which is uh, there with regard to the uh, use of the pressures for the uh, the uh, the cold extrusion and the hot extrusion conditions and the pressure which is uh, developed in case of the hydrostatic extrusion. So hydrostatic uh, extrusion involves the like uh, the pressure which is built up uh, onto the billet through the, the fluid is as I as 1100 to 3100 MPa. So, this is too high pressure to facilitate the uh, extrusion of the metal and another uh, kind th these are the kind of the oils or the fluids which are used and there is one more ethyl glycol, ethyl glycol which uh, is also used as uh, as a fluid for the hydrostatic extrusion. Castor oil is also one of them like castor oil. Now, with regard to the kind of pressure requirements for uh, uh, the hot and the cold extrusion, here just for uh, example and to have the idea, I will be mentioning uh, the pressure for hot extrusion like for the lead may vary 275 to 400 MPa. Uh, for aluminum, it may vary from 70 to 700. For Mg, it can vary from 35 to 350 MPa. For the zinc alloys, 700 to 800 MPa. For brass, it is 200 and uh, while in case of uh, the cold extrusion conditions uh, like for aluminum here it is low, but for uh, extrusion it is 600 
to 1100 MPa and uh, that for uh, mm, it is uh, for the copper alloys although for copper alloys it is 400 copper alloys uh, it is uh, 400 to the 800 MPa for the steels like C10 steel uh, C10 steel it is uh, uh, like 800 to 2500 MPa and C20 steel it is further higher 900 to 3100 MPa. So, the pressure requirements increase when the uh, the cold extrusion is carried out as compared to the hot extrusion because at high under the hot extrusion conditions the metal becomes of the lower yield strength and of the higher ductility. So, it facilitates the easier plastic flow in order to get uh, the desired change in the cross section through the extrusion process. Now, uh, the, the, the two cold extrusion uh, processes are left one is called uh, impact extrusion and uh, extrusion forging cold extrusion forging extrusion forging. So, impact extrusion is the simpler one uh, like say this is mainly used for the thin walled collapsible tubes collapsible tubes. So, here what is done basically uh, like this is the die this is the opening and uh, uh, this is how the metal is placed here initially like this and this is the punch So, when the punch move is in the die, so here basically there is some gap between the die and punch both the sides. So, when the punch impacts with the metal, uh, what happens? The metal starts to flow back. So, here like this. So, basically the metal flows back like this both the sides and the punch goes down like this and this is the metal which is really flowing back both the sides. So, here the metal flows back. So, basically the punch and the die the punch impacts with the metal this metal starts flowing back side. So, this is basically the back extrusion. But uh, and, and this uh, will be flowing back side and here this end will be making the opening for the tube basically. So, here if this we can see with the help of uh, uh, this one here this is the impact extrusion here what we can see uh, this is the die this is the punch and this is the slag or the metal these are the necessary openings. So, when the punch impacts with the metal the metal flows back and follows the path of the punch but, uh, or follows the space between the punch and the die and takes the shape. So, here flow of the metal in backward direction opposite to the direction of the punch leads to the backward cold extrusion process and since it is the impact which facilitates the backward flow. So, it is the impact extrusion. So, this is mainly used for the softer metals and uh, this is used for the making the collapsible tubes. So, that it can be used for accommodating or um, holding the liquids and the paste. So, this is the cold extrusion, cold extrusion forging, cold extrusion forging is used for making uh, the thick walled components uh, where in the, the, the length of the component is limited, size of the component is limited and uh, basically it uh, involves little bit flow of the metal in the backward direction. So, if we see here cold extrusion forging is similar to the impact extrusion main difference is that uh, side walls are much thicker 
in earlier case these were very thin and the height is with more height. So, in earlier case if we see here the height is more and wall thickness is less here it is just opposite wall thickness is very huge and the height is less. So, here uh, when the, uh, the this is the slug this is the die and this is the punch. So, punch impacts with the slug it follows the cavity within this and so whatever little bit flow of the metal has to take place so that that flows back and takes the shape as per the requirement. Once it uh, fills the cavities completely then the ejector hits the job from the back side and uh, for uh, removal uh, of the job from the die. So, the component is ejected with, with the uh, help of the ejector pin provided in the die. So, that is uh, uh, that is about the uh, this is, is the diagram for the hydrostatic extrusion where this is the metal uh, which is mostly uh, brittle in nature of the low ductility. This is the hydrostatic, this is the fluid which is pressurized and this is pressurized with the help of the uh, this ram. So, it help, uh, so pressurized fluid helps to uh, move the metal in the forward direction. So, this is basically the forward extrusion uh, where uh, the the pressure is applied through the fluid. Now, I will summarize uh, this presentation. In this presentation, I have talked about the extrusion uh, process wherein very high reduction ratios can be achieved and there are various variants of the extrusion process like hot extrusion and cold extrusion. Hot extrusion helps to achieve the larger reduction in cross sections like 20 to 40 while the cold extrusions help us to achieve the limited uh, extrusion ratios. Thank you for your attention.